there. We're back and uh, we have a guest today again because, you know, we love to talk to awesome people. So why the hell not? <laughs> so here's another very awesome person. Uh, please welcome the wonderful, the amazing Scott Justin. Oh, thank you very much. Wow, what an introduction. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Let's end there before they find out more. <laughs> that would be a very short episode. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> All right. Before we get into our uh, conversation with uh, Scott, uh, Katie, would you like to introduce our little podcast, please? I'd absolutely love to. Hello, everyone. Welcome to All the Films We Judged Before. I am Katie. That's Lily Kay. And as previously just mentioned, this is the wonderful Scott Joseph. Woohoo! Yeah. Awesome sauce. All right, fantastic. So, if you don't know this tiny little game called Baldur's Gate 3, mm. then now you're gonna. <laughs> you're gonna talk <laughs> if you haven't been paying it. attention to our channel for the past like month, <laughs> exactly, then what were you doing? Like, you know, but um, it's time to get into it again. But I like to do the little let's, you know, paint a picture. Uh, so, my First question is, how did the whole acting and um, everything around it just, just came for you? Were you a theater kid or did it came later on? Um, well, I was big into sport when I was a kid. Um, so, but not in the term, but I think back then it's a much less years ago let's just leave it gray like that um yeah back when i was a kid i think there was less of a kind of oh you're interested in sport let's ch let's channel you into the sport that you want and train you up and, yeah. and make you make sure you get um so i was just doing every sport under the sun but then weirdly we were having a conversation with friends at school and it just a conversation came around about who could be an actor in in the group mm. and it came around to me and at the time, I think I was doing history, art and um, like communicate, design communication or something. And it came around to me and these are really good friends of mine. And they just kind of laughed and went, <laughs> no way. And something in me went, no, no, no. I could be an actor if, if I wanted to. And, and I just I went home and I thought, why are you feeling like that? No, it wasn't um, animosity towards my friends, but I was just thinking, why has it caused so much of a kind of feeling inside me that I could if I wanted to? So consequently, I thought, well, you've got to dip your toe in it and see how it goes. And so I changed one of my the, the courses I was studying. Um, and as you do on a whim um, yeah. <laughs> and and did some amdram that led to semi-professional stuff. And the rest is kind of history. You know, I, I just kind of fell in love with it. Got bit, it, it very is it very much is a case is it you're getting bitten by it. Um, it, yep. uh, you, you just can't get it out of your system um, and then it's a case of just how much are you prepared to to give over towards this fantastic career very true I right. love if, the if, idea that your career and like career trajectory has been based very much on like a sense of a feeling of spite that it's happening feeling of spite from moment. one single conversation <laughs> with a group of friends and that's perfect that's exactly how it should be yeah. But it's that it's that idea of chaos theory, isn't it? It's that mm -hmm. kind of ripple that just something happens, something innocent, and it just ripples out and has bigger consequences than you could ever imagine. And I and I had I known the consequence of that decision, I don't think I would have made it. But the beauty of innocence of youth is that you don't think like that. You just, yeah. oh, I'll, I'll give that a go. And I think to a certain degree, kids nowadays should and rightfully should have that fluidity of career in mind you know mm -hmm. the, you can do whatever you want just study it when you want to study it and try that path there's no career for life anymore mm -hmm. that's kind of been left rightfully way back in the olden days yeah. where I'm um, yeah. from. it's one of those things I I did um I took media studies during my GCSEs because I've always liked like you know film and television and all that sort of stuff yeah. and I was like I like want to study this and then it just like I don't know like it literally clicked one day I was like I could do this as a job and I've wow. done like nothing else like everything I've done since has been in pursuit of like I just need to get into film or tv I don't yeah. know what look like but yeah, that's where I'm going this is awesome. nice it's really great it's very kind of um cathartic to have that that freedom of knowing exactly yes this is my calling this is what I want to get into this is what I want to do yeah um yeah 
Yeah, but then you need to make it happen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's, <laughs> That's... It's like it just was going okay, and then this year has happened, and it's been a little bit tumultuous. But we'll get back on track at some point. And what what is it they say? You know, life's what happens when you're busy making other plans. Yeah, that's the um, one. And it's and you just got to keep focused, keep focused yeah. on what you want. And and if if one route there falls down or doesn't work, well, what else can I do to get in? There are side routes that you can take in. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Also, let's be honest. Ever since 2020, everything's become uh, <laughs> more difficult than it should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're on some kind of crazy tra trajectory. I don't know. Oh my it's, god, it's, I know. Like, it's like the 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 world's just kind of scratching an itch at the moment, and just oh yeah, <laughs> and we are the itch. Um, uh, but, yeah. the, basically, yeah. <laughs> I think that's very fair. <laughs> it's it's uh, like you know, it, it it was never easy, especially when it comes to TV, film, whatever. Uh, to to get in there but i think no. it became even more difficult now to to just you know get a grip yeah. on, on all I of think, it i think well i think it's just because it's diversified so much mm. it there used to be a kind of um a route into film or a yeah. route into tv and it was very much managed and very much controlled but now with the the onset of the internet and mm. and the fact that you can pretty much make almost a broadcastable, a broadcast quality movie, yeah, to a certain degree from home on your on your you know if you've got the latest camera uh, camera phone and whatever, if you've got the right tools and know how, you can shoot really professional looking stuff, and that makes it really hard to the the roots into the business have have really kind of kind of diversified and, and become many yeah. and I think that's hard because then you're like well which one do I take what's the right route to take um hmm. and I don't think there is a right one it's it's yeah. it's it's based on your drive on your 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 personal drive to get to where you want to go and just um yeah it's not easy though yeah it's it's okay. not or, or sometimes <laughs> just yeah or sometimes just life chooses you and you yes. became the the extra who dies and everything <laughs> Like in my case. Oh, <laughs> like, oh really? Yeah, I die in everything. Like or the guy or the guy who recorded the Wilhelm scream, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> I, I just thought like, you know, people have been referring to me and, and I, I like that a lot. Say, I am the show people. Show. I gave you this, Monica, and you've been telling it yeah. to everybody then. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm the showman of extras. That's it. <laughs> die in everything. That's, That's brilliant. Yeah. Oh well. Mm. Well, yeah, you know, we'd love to talk at one point. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. I mean, That'd if you don't, although having said that, if you die in a fantasy thing, thing, then you're much more likely to come back because no one ever dies in fantasy stuff. That's, they always come back, you know. That's true. That's true. Know, Maybe so. one day. I died in Game of Thrones as well, so I don't know. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. I didn't come back as a White Walker, which is very sad. I would have enjoyed that. <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah, the prosthetics alone would have been fantastic. Oh my God, yes, I love prosthetics. It's just I always oh, wanted yeah. to be like a special uh, effect makeup artist, uh, oh, wow. and then uh, we don't have that kind of school back here in Hungary. Right. Okay. Uh, so I was like, oh, I'm just going to do it in London or or somewhere in the UK, uh, and then I didn't get in, and the tuition was would have been so expensive that I was like, yeah, not without a scholarship. So yeah. That's life. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I I'd... about you. I think you would have been, you would be, make an excellent special effects artist. I could see yeah. that being a thing. Yeah, I think so too. But I, you know, I don't know if it's too late or not. Maybe one day. It's never too late. It is never, <laughs> never too, too late. late. Not for effects. And and the thing is, you could um, if you do some study on the side and contact some special effects guys or uh, prosthetic guys. You know, I've worked with a few of them, and they've all been really nice enthusiastic welcoming people just you know just excited to do what they're doing um yeah. so all you need to do is match that level of excitement and enthusiasm um and be really thirsty to suck up the knowledge and then just contact a few and just watch some some of the latest movies the indie movies and stuff like that and find out who does the the um the, the prosthetics and the the effects and just contact them say i saw this i loved it love the effects yeah you know is it is there any chance i could just come in and see you guys and chat with you guys and who knows 
who knows that's very true yeah yeah i i really love it like i uh, there was this um uh competition show called face off where yeah. it, it was just as like, like you know special effect makeup artists just you know competing to create wow. a new a new makeups uh and and prosthetics and everything uh, in in every episode i freaking love that show it was honestly one of the best ones in what competition what was that on i don't want to see that i think it was on sorry what was it called again face off face off i'm gonna have yeah. to check that out I'll i'm gonna Google have to check face off because of the movie but, yeah uh, um... yeah it had nine I mean, seasons it was very good oh wow, wow. oh okay yep. cool oh uh, yep. yeah definitely because i've yeah because i've done some full head prosthetics and stuff like that not me doing it i've had yeah, yeah, yeah. full head prosthetics <laughs> and, stuff. and I, it's just it's great fun it really it is, is. It, it looks it's really like is. it was made by sci-fi and it yes. seems it looks like it's on prime Ooh. it should be it should uh be it's, it's it's on prime but you have to it's through one of those their channels i think it's on hey yo hey you hey you i don't know what it's called but it is <laughs> it seems to be you can it's available <laughs> it's okay. yeah, i cool. highly recommend it, it out. yeah it's no very good it's very good all right back to you <laughs> yeah you, sorry we like to do this side things here um uh, all right um uh, when you decided, uh, out of spite or whatever, <laughs> that you're going to yes. be an actor, <laughs> uh, did you ever think to yourself that you're going to do video games one day? Or was there no. like, uh, no. 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 Okay. no, not at all. Um, I I just wanted to, to act, actually, just wanted to do anything. Um, I started out on, in theatre, and I think I, I, I loved theatre because um, I love big characters. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you go to the, my website and stuff, um, the, the most of the, the kind of stuff, the bigger stuff that I've done has been bigger character stuff, um, and particularly for the stage and also um, some screen stuff, just because I feel very comfortable embracing big characters and exploring big characters and stuff like that and i think um where i needed training and honing and and all that kind of stuff was on when the character is skin deep is or is is very close to you mm. um that's that that was an art i really had to work at and i and i'm still working out to master and um so very very much I'll try and, you know, watch what or listen to what other people are doing and do that. But as an actor, no, you just want to do, you just want to act. Do you want to be yeah. in this? Hell yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, you know, you, you want to do this? Yeah. And and so consequently, I I, I did a, a broad array of stuff, you know, theatre, film, live stuff, training, um, corporates. Mm-hmm. And then gradually, um, because you do a lot of resting when you're an actor, <laughs> which is when you're out of work um yeah. and so and it can be quite exhausting you know you're trying to keep uh, keep yourself fresh keep yourself relevant keep trained um and work and earn and i got fed up um doing you know waiting tables um working in mail rooms and all that mm. kind of stuff so i got a job um in a big media company in in over here and um working on us um, in their test lab on 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 subtitles um and then I've, I've done a bit of that <laughs> yeah it was assisted subtitles and then I was in the same lab as a, a service called audio description mm-hmm. and um done a bit of that too <laughs> yeah well and and so they they were t- they were doing a script for a, a brand new si- um, fantasy program for Gormenghast um mm-hmm. which is a, an old uh, show from way back um and they just ah oh, really need there was two women scripting it and they were, we really need a bloke's voice for this, and I just turned around and said I'll do it, um, and so I, I got into audio description and so for years I've scripted and voiced for audio description, which mm-hmm. is um, a service for the visually impaired. So we script and voice what happens when no one's talking, mm-hmm. yeah, and that kind of helped me learn my voice. Um, and in terms of mic control and, and, and stuff like that. And so I, I used that time to then put the feelers out in voice in the voice world. Mm. And and that led eventually, it's a bit of a protracted route, towards gaming um, and um, just doing loads of character uh, voices and then realising that you, if you're voice acting, especially for games and animations, it's not just a funny voice. Mm. You have to... In, you know kind of be able to 
immerse yourself in the character behind the voice and be able to do emotions and be shifts and stuff like that. So I, I used it as a springboard and then really worked at, at honing my craft. Uh, and I'm still learning now. Um, there's still a mm. lot for me to learn. So, um, which is what's fantastic about working on something like Baldur's Gate three, because there's some really fantastic um, actors working on the project to, yep. to learn an awful lot from. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we talked a f to a we few of them. We've, we've <laughs> yes. Yes, we have. It's been very fun. <laughs> it's been very fun to find out the experiences and everything. Uh, but then the, the third uh, very important question is: How did you get cast into Baldur's Gate Three? I asked that from everyone, and I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, my agent, um, my excellent agents, um, sent me a casting pack. Um, I think there were several characters, and this was in about. 2020 so i think it was 20 late 2020 or 2021 mm -hmm. um so i think they've been going for a while then mm. um um or just started no, been going for about a year um and there was a character part not the emperor um and i went oh. for that and got it um and that was marcus I don't know if you've encountered Marcus, if you've played the game. Oh, it's a big game. <laughs> it's, it a, it's a, a very big game. game. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's funny is that you could get, make your way through it and not encounter some of the main characters, um, some of the main peripheral, you know, kind of side characters. And so I got cast for, here, uh, for, for him, and it was a wonderful part. Um, and I was, you know, and we had to do the audition, which is, you know, it's a proper um, self tape with video because mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. want to see your movements, obviously. So, um, so I did that, got cast, and then I thought that was it. And then another casting pack came up. Um, my agent said that you know they want to see you again. Um, what do you think of this part? And it was a really nice part. I mean, I don't know. You don't know much about the part, and it's not yeah. the cat. The, the name for the part is not the name. Yeah. is eventually going to be the character it's all kind of cloak and dagger stuff um so you just have what they give you and fortunately they they gave some really nice detail and some and a couple of really good scenes that i was able to kind of get my teeth into which is quite which can be quite rare for gaming auditions sometimes you you just get snippet lines with emotional mm. drivers for each line and and that's fair enough you know you, you have to be able to do that uh, that's the skill yeah. yeah um but with this one i i really felt i could sink my teeth into the lines and and understand a bit about the character and and then after to a point and then you have to make a decision like well i think it's going to be this this mm -hmm. character i'm going to make this character choice and it has you know a bold decision and just go with it and hope that the people casting go oh i like what they've done there um, unfortunately, they seem to do that for, for me. So <laughs> they, they cast me and I went in and I think the first session I was like, I was really kind of nervous, wanting to get the character and not really knowing too much about it mm -hmm. and having a lot of people walk by going, oh, so you're you're playing the emperor. Mm -hmm. And yes, yes, I am. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I didn't know anything about it. I was like, well, why do people keep saying that to me? Um <laughs> So it was a nervous first session, but then gradually as we, you know, as we, we found the character and we found that the, the physicality of the character and the, and the voice settled, um, I could really enjoy exploring a little bit more the character mm. of the Emperor. Was this your first time doing motion capture or? N no, no, yeah. I, it was my first time for a while. Mm. I, okay. I did, I'd done a few smaller bits um, recently but but nothing to this level because well I thought these were two small parts and then they said oh no you'll be in for a few sessions <laughs> I was like ah great nice. um but no I had a I did a lot when it when the industry first was starting out um and it was very much um finding its feet there were different styles of mo as there are now actually but um different styles of motion capture no one was really sure what style would 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 catch mm -hmm. on so there was the suit with the ball the, the reflective markers there was another one where you're you're carrying a pack and stuff um and i kind of experimented a few with a few of those with a few of the um the game dev companies so i have done stuff in the past mm -hmm. and i've been controlled characters uh, as a uh, control character as well which is completely different and very physical and exhausting <laughs> <laughs> it is 
<laughs> yeah, because you have to record everything in like three different emotions. So calm, um, yeah. um, alert, and then panicked. And then you have to record all the, the movements with those three different emotions. And, you know, it's just, yeah, you don't need to go to the gym or anything like that. You, you're <laughs> that's the exercise, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the yeah. exercise. That makes so, full yeah. work out. <laughs> yeah, in a, in a very tight, sweaty suit. <laughs> Yay. That's how you want to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <fun>. Absolutely. <laughs> Itty. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I, you took me by surprise. I was like, what? <laughs> I know, I know. Because, you know, um, it's, it's all here's the baton. Like, <laughs> now you go. I was like, okay. Hi. Um, uh, I want to go back a little bit because you mentioned you, because um, we love all types of storytelling here. Like, because we started as mainly a film podcast, but we talk about TV, we love talk about video games, obviously. But I also yeah. love talking about uh, theater. I'm just curious if, like, w- what kind of things that you like? Mm. Did you have like like a favorite like role that you did on stage or? or oh like... yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I mean, there are a couple for different reasons. Um, so there's a there's a really wonderful uh, farce. Which mm. are they're a little bit dated now, farces. I, um, I had to study farce during my A levels for the we did a right. unit on comedy during my English literature. So we did um much to do about nothing and um she stoops to conquer. Uh, oh, which right. I re- yeah, I did yeah. I really enjoyed She Stoops to Conquer. <laughs> well, the first the first uh, kind of semi-pro thing I did um was uh, Noises Off. Um and I mm-hmm. played Gary Lejeune. It's actually in the West e- um the West End at the moment, I think. Um oh, wow. And it's it's a it's just fantastic. It basically, it's about a show that goes wrong, and you've yes. got the you get it's behind the scenes. You learn about all the characters in the first act and and all the relationships, and they're rehearsing yeah. a play, and it's all mm. going terribly wrong, and there's relationships forming and stuff. Then the second act is it flips around, and you see the 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 set mm. um, and the show as it starts to go a little bit wrong. But it's opening night and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but it's yeah, it's it's no, it, yeah, it is opening night, and so it goes out, and then. The third act, it flips around to uh, to behind the scenes as the show goes completely wrong, um, and you get to see why it's going wrong and all the relationships are falling apart, and and then there's loads of physical comedy and stuff like that, and it's it was just wonderful, and I got to fall down the stairs, which I love. <laughs> um, so Proper yeah, pratfall uh, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I got it wrong way around. I think the first time you see the front of the stage where they're rehearsing it, then it's back behind the scenes, then it's the front of the stage, and that's when I fell down the stairs. And it's great because um, the the director was like, just slide down on your bum like that because it's safe. And I was like, no, 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 no. I want to go down head first. I, I am tumbling down the <laughs> I am going head first down the stairs. I want people to think I've genuinely injured myself. Um, oh my and, God. you know, a lot of the time they did, there was a kind of a... Like that, as the as the act, so all the cast went like that, and the audience were like laughing, and then they stopped, <laughs> and then there was a pause, and then the play continued, and they're like, "Oh God, thank God, he was meant to." Do that. <laughs> I love so, plays yeah. that get to be a little bit, um, like a little bit like third wall break e. I guess you could go. I yeah. I saw a play in on uh, in the Armada recently called A Mirror, uh, which had Johnny Lee Miller in it. Um, oh wow! And it was all about like it. The, the whole thing was set up to be like a wedding. Yes. because it's it's all it's all about censorship so like it was in like sort of an unnamed place wherein they couldn't like they, they couldn't put on plays about like you know criticizing government or anything along these lines so, it, so right. they places a lot of places especially in europe will, will put these weddings together in order yeah. to put it from unauthorized plays so you go in it's like this is a wedding we're doing a wedding and then as soon as everything kind of like they kind of keep looking out and like there's like sirens that go off every once in a while being like i think they might be coming back we have to be like calm and all this sort of stuff it was so good the whole thing because oh, it was wow. and it was all very meta in, in a very sort of yeah. strange way but everybody in it was fantastic but and it, you get like a little bit on you because like the audience is kind of culpable in the whole thing yes and you're just sort of saying like i'm not actually in trouble <laughs> yeah. i quite like that yeah it, yeah it keeps you on the edge of your seat literally yeah. um but yeah i mean in, in noises off actually the director starts can start off in some productions and most productions do this sitting in the audience and then mm-hmm. He calls out or she calls out their lines and suddenly you're like, whoa. And they <laughs> because they're watching their their actors rehearse. Um, yeah. And so that's that's where it comes from. So there's that one. And then another one, uh, you probably don't, you, you guys probably don't know this. There was a show called, um, a TV show called uh, Lazy Town, 
Um, yes. The, the, yeah, yeah, of I course. Know. Yeah. I grew up with, with, with my, oh, my, I've got oh, a, cool. a younger brother who's six years younger than me. So that was very much in his like era of like kids TV show. I know. Right. Well, <laughs> there was, I did the, the stage tour of Lazy Town. I played Robbie Rotten. And, oh, wow. Um, nice. Stefan Karl, who played the Robbie Rotten in the TV show, was just a phenomenal uh, physical actor. Yeah. He went on to the, um, I think, the Grinch in Broadway and stuff like that. And mm. I, I just have so much respect for him. Um, and it was just such a fantastic character to embody. Huge character with a prosthetic chin yeah. and the black mm -hmm. hair and stuff. Yeah. So I did that. And then I got to do an arena tour um, with CBeebies. Mm -hmm. um and we were performing to like fifteen thousand, twenty thousand screaming Jeez. kids wow Jeez. that was just <laughs> that was just a phenomenal experience and that's where i got to learn about um because in in theater sometimes you have like an earpiece mm -hmm. so you can hear yourself back but usually you'd only have one mm -hmm. so you can still hear other mm -hmm. actors on an arena tour you have two mm -hmm. so you can't hear anything you are entirely reliant on the, the the speakers picking up stuff and feeding it to both ears and that felt so wrong to me so I stepped out on stage on the first night and took one out said my first line because I had to run down from the the um the um the, from the arena onto the stage and fall over and you know everyone laughs and stuff uh and uh say my first line and it about half a second later it bounced back to me like a full reverb bounce back because the, the space is enormous. So I was like, oh, oh my God, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, talk about, yes. Just just, just do what they say, Scott. Just yeah. <laughs> follow orders. Yes. Uh, that, I mean, to get it, Robbie Rotten became a bit of a like meme um yeah. a bit of a legend especially a few years ago and um, obviously after stefan um passed away it was it, it, yeah it's become very beloved um oh. but that that is such a character to get to, to play in such a big stage yeah and i was really anxious to to do to do it justice and to do him justice um they were so they were so welcoming and so nice i never got to meet him sadly but um the whole company were really great and I got to work with um with Sporticus and stuff like that. And <laughs> um and yeah, it I, I was I, I was lucky that I had such a masterful um actor to observe um and learn from. Um mm. and that's that's what I do a lot of is is a lot of close observation and and then I go away and see if I can do it. But with that character it's like when you put on a suit and it just fits. Mm. I, mm -hmm. I was just very, I, in fact, my my wife at the time, I said, I mentioned, oh, there, there's auditions for Robbie Rotten. She went, you'll get that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so uh, and I, you know, I was like, really? She, she, you'll <laughs> so get that. <laughs> and if, again, it's that really big character to, to yeah. hide behind. To, uh, yeah. And um, it's so over the top that I can just throw myself into it. Um, and I loved that. I loved it. Those are the best ones, to be honest. Like, you know, I, I always like to do in theater when they land me, which is like, you know, it's very annoying because I'm usually typecast as either the villain or right, the, book. or the, or, I love the villains, uh, or the comedic relief of the whole yeah. thing, which is like, you know, it's fine. Sometimes it would be nice <laughs> to play like, you know, I don't yeah. know, the, <laughs> the maiden who's in love or whatever. But at the but same time, being the villain is the best thing ever. <laughs> it's so much fun, and particularly in that show, because I had so many gadgets and the huge kind of fluffy orange chair that yes. shed everywhere, and the <laughs> gold uh, the llama costume that was just didn't let your skin breathe at all. Um, but what it was just, <laughs> yeah. It, but it was it was just fantastic, and um, yeah, that, I mean. Funnily enough, you say, you know, uh, playing the villains and stuff, but a lot of the time now, I think there's a there's a, a, a trend to show, are they are they actually villains? Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and they, they, you know, you look at, think of Wicked and mm. stuff like mm -hmm. that. You know, it, it just twists, it's like shades of grey, twists it. Well, you just don't know their side of things, do you? Very so, true. Very so true. maybe you're not the villain. Maybe. But I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. But yes, I am. <laughs> but yes, I am. <laughs> my my like 
dream role of of ever like you know if I could ever do one it, it would be the type of role of like Homelander or Joker yes. like you know that those are like I love those juicy roles but they are they're yeah. just evil they, they're just yeah evil. and the thing with the Joker <laughs> the thing with the Joker is finding a your own perspective into the character yes. mm-hmm. and, and finding a way to portray it that that you know is yours mm-hmm. um yeah, hundred percent. Um, back to Baldur's Gate. Uh, yes. uh, we go uh, for a, a little bit because I had a wonderful conversation with uh, Samantha Bayard, oh, and uh, <laughs> um, that was this uh, part where uh, Samantha mentioned that you called her at one point. <laughs> I call her all the time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it was for a particular reason, which I just loved. We all know that, um, let's be fair, people are horny, and this game is very horny. <laughs> it's like <laughs> everyone <laughs> wants to uh, do things with you, basically, which is like, okay. And apparently you called Samantha because you get to do one of these fantastic love scenes that's yeah. in the game as the emperor and uh if i heard it correctly that was kind of the first time that you had to do something like that yeah um yeah it was i mean i've done romance stuff before because uh but not not for acting uh, in terms mm-hmm. of acting for for a game um yeah. In performance capture i i uh, there was romance in a game that i did over lockdown called uh, expeditions rome Mm-hmm. Um, and I, the character I played in that ha, um, was romanceable, and um, and I, to be honest, I, I could see the direction that games are going in. The, the, there's that kind of blending in with the filmic medium, mm. um, and it just seems right and justifiable that if you want characters to have a fullness, a believability, a real world kind of believability, then having that aspect of the game accessible to gamers they don't have to choose to do it mm. it's up mm-hmm. to them i just think it's a natural thing it, it it just works but yeah i mean of course that's easier said than done so um <laughs> so like yeah i believe I this to be a thing that should exist i don't know how i feel about doing it do it <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean, I always, I always want to sound people out that have been there, done that, or, or maybe know a bit more, just so that I, I you know, I, I can garner as much um, uh, knowledge from people in the know as possible. For, for warned as forearmed, as they say. So, yeah. Mm. But it, it never prepares you. I didn't. I was just told my character was romanceable. Um, and so I didn't know exactly. Romanceable is a very, I mean, that's just... It is a very a, broad thing. Yes. <laughs> you know, that could be taking them out to dinner over candlelight, you know, and, and just <laughs> having a sip of wine and talking about, you know, kind of what's your favourite colour. Um, or, um, I mean, God, that would really, that would be a boring date. Wow. <laughs> um, but then there's the other side of things. And yeah, obviously it had a bit of that... Um, involved um so yeah <laughs> it's it's much i don't know if it's easier but it's it's a bit easier these days with the with the coordinators because I, I don't know what their proper term is yeah we have yes, we have voice directors and movement coordinators um uh, so helping us um and they do a, a massive job um it really i i can't i, I know it sounds as though oh we, they're all saying that but it it really is a collaborative effort. Mm. The nature of games, um, the fragmented nature of games in, in the way that it's recorded and put together m- means that you, it's really hard to be across everything mm. As, mm. as a performer. <clears throat> and so you need people around that, that are keeping you honest, keeping your character honest and helping you find a way through. Um, and that's, you know, what what the, the guys at pit stop and um and the freelancers who came on board really helped us and uh, really helped me mm. Mm. it's it's a oh one day one day it would be lovely to do a game i was always interested in doing like motion capture and whatever it's it's yeah. it's a whole new world <laughs> let's be fair like still yeah and it's been going for a while but like it still and feels it's, like it's getting it's, bigger it's getting bigger yeah. there's more stuff out there so never say never 
Never say never. That's mm-hmm. true. I can die in motion capture as well. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, yeah. I think that's just that everybody has to die at some point during, <laughs> during motion capture. Yeah. It's kind of the nature of games or anything. Absolutely. See? Yeah. See, that's perfect. That's I can just stand in for someone if they don't know how to die. <laughs> I can come, it's fine. <laughs> um, all right, what was what was the hmm, hardest? Let's let's go with the hardest part in, in doing the Emperor, obviously. I, I would say the hardest part was um as you can see, as you've talked to me, I'm I'm quite a gestury physical person. Mm. Um and, and playing the game, you probably noticed if you've you've got to the Emperor, um um and if you haven't brutally killed them straight away (laughs) um but they're quite stoic um and that was something that really took some some kind of getting used to is um i was told a lot of the time when they um when their dialogue happens it's through telepathy so um they're quite still stoic um and often they might be hovering as well um so we I, i kind of found with the movement director this this breathing form where it, it's the, you can't mm. see with my arms, but they're kind of flowing from the shoulders as mm-hmm. the chest, because um, they've got quite a, a, a broad chest. So mm. when it expands, it, it, you know, I envisaged it taking up a lot of um, um, deep breaths and it, it, it flowing the shoulders out and, and that flowing through the arms, not dramatically like he looks like he's flying mm. um, or they look like they're flying, but, uh, but just to, to give it that kind of, almost flowing in the air but Mm -hmm. flowing through water and very much once I got that a lot of the movement then came the gesturing came from that and it's almost like it flows through water so if if they're reaching out it's it's a very slow gesture and Mm -hmm. then it goes down which posed its own problems because obviously you don't want every single line of dialogue if there's a gesture taking ages because I've got to return to my base pose Mm. Um, I don't know if you, you probably heard of base poses, but in yep. the game, yeah, they have to stitch all the the sections of dialogue together, and so you must return to a base pose for them to do that, mm-hmm. um, unless it's ha- a bit of hand animation or, or cinematic scene where they where it all flows together anyway. Right. Um, so yeah, so I'd be sometimes the the difficulty arose where I was delivering a line. Um, and had a gesture and was thinking, ah, oh, this gesture's going well, but I'm taking far too long and I've got to get it down by my side before I reach the end of the line so I can reach my base pose whilst <laughs> delivering the line. And there we go, and it's all good. <laughs> whilst being, you know, <laughs> bottom of my range and all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So there was a lot to think about, but not in terms of complex gestures. It was actually restrictive um, and took a lot of control to, to do. Mm, that's, well... No, I could ah, see it immediately. The yeah. moment you started doing that, I was like, yep, yeah. there he is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly yeah. my thought as well. <laughs> yeah, and 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 so, because very often when I, you know, if I was playing Marcus and I was thinking about something, you know, he was, uh, he was quite a, a bold character and he'd, he'd think about stuff and maybe look over there and then he'd come back here and it would all be very, you know, natural. <laughs> but for the Emperor, if they were thinking about something rather than turn their head, it was kind of a whole shoulder yeah i'm gonna go over there and then i'll come back i mean occasionally you know they did tweak their head movements and stuff but Mm -hmm. um i was really lucky actually because in the motion capture unit i i had when when you do motion capture they hang your skeleton um over an um, an, on an avatar so you get a little neutral character that you can see your movements live Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, but i actually had a mind flayer avatar Mm -hmm. Because um, because of the uh, tentacles, yep. so I had to cheat my chin up a little bit so that mm. the tentacles could flow out, um, and so it was that really helped being able to see the mind flayer come to life in front of me. Yeah. Um, that was fantastic. There's also right. something about like the physicality of having to hold your head up when you're playing <laughs> yeah, a character exactly. who's like known as the emperor because it gives yes. it Im- immediately gives a sense of yeah. like I am very important. Yes, regal. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then you co- contrast that with the moments where they get to show another side, mm. and that, mm. that, that that that's that was really nice. It, it really helped me to 
investigate and 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 the voice director and the movement director to investigate a, a fuller character otherwise i think they would have been quite two-dimensional yeah so um that's you know that that's why if you know if you are able to to play through and explore with mm -hmm. the emperor mm -hmm. there's a there's a lot to to discover there oh a lot like you know without any spoilers like i i think all of the backstories are are really good uh for every character but like i was so surprised by the emperors i was like genuinely was like oh wow like <laughs> it's yeah. massive if you think about it like uh it's very good so katie i don't know why you killed the emperor <laughs> and, and to be fair i killed the emperor near the very end of the game okay and to be yeah, honest i did get to be through honest, a, very, a lot of very interesting conversations i thought about it very intently <laughs> but let you know i mean for, for the wonder of this game is that there is no right or wrong way to play it. Obviously, if you die mid quest and you don't get to the end, then that's you've made a wrong decision or you you've lost the battle and that's it. But you just go back. But your your venture through is your venture, your adventure there, and and what you discover along the way and what you the characters you meet and the way you interact with them is entirely your adventure and that's the beauty of it and then you could play it again with different motivations with different characters with different intentions and have a completely different game so i think that's the beauty of it so if you did kill any character I, maybe I, uh, an if I, if you do player, like one little like it wasn't my I, I just decided to go against his wishes and then he turned on me so <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, the, yeah, there's a lot of discussion online about the, you know, about that, and and but again, it very much depends on the relationship that you form, as it does with all the other characters, mm. about how they then react to you and what you want to do, mm -hmm. um, because all of the characters have motivations and drivers and things that they want to achieve. So, yeah, yeah. And for me, it was clear because the emperor was saving the team's ass. So I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> we're following the emperor instead of like, because I had like basically two choices of either it's going to be Gale becoming the evil wizard of everything or following the emperor's uh, way. And it's a no brainer. Emperor. It's a no brainer. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. I did a secret third path. Yeah. There are many parts, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> so uh, I was like, yeah, nah. Yeah, no, but I did. I did really enjoy. I because it was in a way that, that makes a character particularly fascinating. I will get to the end of a sentence in a second. <laughs> um, where I, I, you know, every time that you had like, you know, you got to chat with him a bit more, I found my perspective on him very much shifting in different directions. Yeah. Um. Uh. Which and and if there were times where I started feeling like, oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not vibing with your vibe anymore it was yeah. always it always felt very like okay but this yeah. feels right it doesn't it, nothing about it feels like um <clears throat> car like caricature-ish or or no. like, it, it is really it is a very it just it felt like me naturally um my reaction to somebody just existing you know yeah um and that's that's because that's uh, what we were trying to to buy for um um and trying to that fine line mm -hmm. of of well, hang on. <clears throat> they seem like they're they're being honest, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they <laughs> might not be. Yeah. How do I? And and what, what the beauty of it when I saw some of the early streamers playing the game, um, and I wanted I just a view to see how it was landing. Mm -hmm. When was their reactions? When the the emperor made a, a, a particularly wonderful or or big offer or gesture mm. and, and and they'd be playing and they'd be like oh god yeah. i don't know what to do i don't know what to do what do i do that, mm -hmm. ah! because they're a mind flyer mm -hmm. and that brings lots of preconceptions and and kind of baggage with it um and and that it was a big challenge to there's a big challenge there um and that's what something we we were we were really playing with it. You know, it's shades of grey, not black or white mm -hmm. um, with the Emperor. Yeah, I, I only checked one thing, I think, regarding the Emperor, where it was like a big decision of, of I'm not going to spoil it, but it's, it was either saying yes or no. And I yes. just wanted to know if I say no, 
then will I die? <laughs> that, that, that was it. Yeah, and that's fair enough. Yeah. So I, I checked that and, and they were like, no, you're fine. And I was like, oh, okay, good. Then no. <laughs> that's it. easy peasy. Excellent. That's how most of my decisions in the game went. Where I was like, is this going to absolutely screw me later if I make this yeah. decision right now? Yeah. And I'd be just like, and okay, of course okay, you, do, maybe, uh... you do an awful lot of save. Yep. Save before so that much, decision. Lot of <laughs> saves. I, have, I have so many saves. <laughs> you have to. You have, yeah. Especially in a game like this, you have to save all the time. That's what, uh, and because I used to do the, the the role play books, you know, where you had to make the yep, decision yeah, yeah, and go yeah. to another page. Oh, so, yeah, oh my yeah, god! Yeah. And I, I would have. I started off with my finger in the yeah, previous yeah, yeah. page, and I'd yeah, I think, oh, I haven't died. That's okay, but I'm just going to keep that finger there, and, and because there's another choice here, so. <laughs> And I'd be like, like no, no, this is silly. It's like, on the one hand, yes, I want to have a very, um, you know, organic playthrough where I just make decisions and things just happen. But also on the other side, I don't want to do anything wrong. So, yes. <laughs> and I need to know all of the options properly before I yes. make an informed decision. It's very hard yes. to play these games when you're a people pleaser, let's be fair, which I am. So I'm always going for the best possible ending for everyone. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you can always do it then a game where one that goes against all of that. And yeah, but the, I, I literally can't. Like, I there's something you... <laughs> just just stopping me from like because for, I I started the second playthrough right after the first one, and I was like, I'm just gonna be evil in this one. Yeah, and then I couldn't. <laughs> no. Just right. That's just... it. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get a a very stiff telling off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not pleased with you. In fact, I'm not going to tell you off. I'm just not going to speak to you. <laughs> I'm leaving. I think uh, I did that. I, I actually did that when the conversation with Gail at one point, where he um kind of he started. He didn't have a go at me, but he was uh, like, I went and had I had a dance with Will uh, because he uh, offered, uh, and I was like, all right, I'm 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 not staying yes to anybody specifically at the moment. And Gail was like. So I see you, you, you went on like this thing and he got like really jealous. And I tried to just leave the conversation without telling him like one or the other. And he like, he went, that's ice cold. And I was like, oh, it is. I don't want to do this. <laughs> It is high school. You can't just leave a conversation like you are I... ice cold with Gail. <laughs> so commit oh, to romancing Gail for the foreseeable, or completely turn him down. I was like, I don't want to do either of those. Can I? Can I have... <laughs> so you just leave. I so I'm just gonna leave. He, like was so mad at me. I was like, okay, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna redo this. I need to redo this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go back to earlier save. Go, Go back, back to earlier save. <laughs> and Gail, <laughs> this never happened. No. <laughs> <laughs> fun times uh all right since we are a film and tv podcast most of the yes. time uh we can't go anywhere without talking about uh films and tv a little bit mm -hmm. and i sent you a few questions oh, <laughs> so evil you can questions <laughs> they're not evil maybe a little bit <laughs> 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 but you had time to prepare I did. Uh, so uh, I'm going to ask my favorite question, uh, which is, "What is your comfort movie? Uh, okay. The movie that you can just, you know, right? Put it, now, watch it, beautiful." Yeah, it all depends on my mood. Okay. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna reel off. I'm gonna not a lot, but I'm gonna reel off several, and then you can pick the one or ones that you want to talk about. Okay. 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 So, okay. There's a, there's a there's a festive one which is Elf. There's Goonies, Perfect movie. there's Alien, Goonies. and there's Never Ending Story. So there you go. That's a great, uh, there... That is a great selection of movies. <laughs> <laughs> so and another best talk... friend. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to talk about any one of those. Alien. Then, I mean, Alien is not really a comfort movie. But it is. No, based... but it absolutely is. It is thing. a comfort movie. It's one of those it was things. On the other, it, it was on the other night. It, I, I didn't know it was on. It came, I, I flicked past it, and I was like, they um they were just going on you know to the um across to the uh prometheus prometheus yeah yeah mm -hmm. and um and and i thought oh god i've got to watch this and there's something about it that's just it's quintessentially sci-fi and mm. so brilliantly scripted acted um cinematics it's mm -hmm. just a one the alien hr geiger did a wonderful job so with good. the design um and his mind is just um, full of sex let's be honest <laughs> it, well, yeah if you i did i did it uh, i did kind of research and, and and i was like yeah Whoa. 
<laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you don't get that with Alien so much. So there we go. Um, but you do with the artwork behind it. Um, but yeah, the look of it, and and I was into like you were to special effects and stuff like that. And I, I uh, the Alien as a as a design of an alien is almost perfection. Mm-hmm. I can't mm-hmm. think of a better all round alien no. than that. I mean, I know people. There's the whole um, predator alien thing, but yeah. <laughs> And the ass- uh, yeah. there is something about the alien that it like it isn't very very impressive to be able to create something that is like that recognizable yeah. um uh, and and also just like so intrinsically alien like yeah. <laughs> you really do look at it because yep that's not a thing that but, would exist here but the boldness of the film is it, it's there's not there's not a lot of quick cuts it takes its time the scripting and the, and the way it's delivered lines clash they overlap there's mm. dirty dialogue in terms of it people interrupting each other and conversations around tables and stuff like that. It it just seems so organically created. Mm. And I, you know, mm-hmm. I know there's lots of stories about the whole chest eruption scene um, yes. around the table in that the yep. cast weren't told exactly what was going to happen and stuff, but all of those kind of nuggets of genius and, and exactly. the, the ability to just have, um, only a couple of shots that you rely on and just let it breathe and, yeah. and let the tension build the the whole when they're looking when he's looking for his cat and he's just there's just a moment when nothing's happening and the water drops on his caps and it and it, the lighting is just perfect on his face and it's all building tension mm-hmm. and you just don't get that that boldness that kind of that um patience in a lot of films nowadays they feel like they've got to move at a million miles an hour and and they don't you can if you've no. got a really great idea you can just let it so, simmer mm-hmm. so true i love like the alien franchise is, is one of my favorites of all time easily yeah. freaking love alien and aliens and uh well you know thanks ridley scott for the first one we're not going to talk about Ridley Scott anymore because he ruined the whole thing. So I'm like, uh, well, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah, mm, I'm very salty about it. And if I get into it, we're going to sit here for like three hours. So I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to skip on that. Moving <laughs> briefly on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sigourney Weaver is the best thing that oh, ever just happened. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, oh, Ripley is easily still to this day. First of all, uh, Ripley paved the way for strong female characters. I'm yeah. just going to put this out there because it, it's the truth. And um, uh, uh, there's a Netflix docuseries, uh, the uh, movies that made us, uh, and there's an alien episode in it. And uh, Sigourney says it herself. And I can, you know, it's it's the truest thing that that Ripley opened the door for yeah. many more to come. In yeah, a beautiful because she, way. She, she drove that whole movie. And, uh, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's lots of other, uh, other oh, yeah. contributing factors to making it great. But there, as a through thread, mm. that was all her. And mm-hmm. yep. just phenomenal, phenomenal acting. And, and but it, just everything about it was like, like the tagline for yeah. it. In space, in space, no one can, no one can, no one can scream. Really scream. It's like, oh my god, let me see this film. I was yeah. nagging my dad, Dad, can I see? Uh, can I see Alien yet? No, you're too young. Dad, can I see Alien? <laughs> no, you're too young. Oh God, go on then. So I went downstairs, and it scared me. It scared the crap out of me. But when I'm when I'm watching movies, I very much just everything goes away, mm-hmm. and I'm just I'm actually as though I'm I'm little hovering in yeah. the seat. Um. But I do view things from like when I see um, special effects and stuff like that, I view mm-hmm. them a little bit with it is a special effect, Scott. It is a special effect. So it wasn't traumatic for me, but I was just like, this is fantastic. And and Carpenter's the thing as well for yeah. you know, special effects. I was just like, this is amazing. Yes. Um, yeah. But yes. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm getting off. But... No, 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 no. This is what we love. Um, it's especially when it's about alien because I, I, I fucking uh, love alien. <laughs> I just got the <laughs> it, it, it really completely opposite end of the spectrum. I got very excited when you mentioned Elf first because that is, oh. I think, the best personally the best Christmas movie. Um, it is the one that will always go in our house around Christmas. It never gets old. It's it just never gets great. old, and I can guarantee. And my wife just looks at me and goes, "You are such a kid." 
<laughs> because that the scene when he downs the bottle of coke yep. and burps, I will literally be laughing for about five minutes afterwards in it's, stitches. It's one of those because, things where like... and I know it's coming up and I've seen it so many times, but I'm it's just hilarious. It's like it's one of those movies that has become like the so much of the the, the you know dialogue in that movie has just become like syntax within our family. So if you hear somebody burp in some part of the house, there's somebody going, Did you hear that? <laughs> Every time. Excellent. <laughs> Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Yeah. It's and it, it, it's so ridiculously stupid, but um, but hilarious, and its heart is totally in the right mm-hmm. place. It's yeah. just an incredibly sweet movie, and it's one of those ones where I, I pe- when people talk about Christmas movies, they don't mention it enough, or if they do, they hate it. It's one yeah. of those like, and I'm always like, no, it's the best. I don't understand how you could not like but it. Why are you talking to usually? Because Elf is like, whenever we talk about Elf, it's like it's the best thing ever. Well, we basically we, I, around I, here. I, 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 I've, I've met many people who are just like really ambivalent about it, or they just don't like it at all. I'm like, you, you're wrong. It's one of the best. <laughs> you're missing out. And uh, I, I recommended this movie. I don't know who did I recommend it to. You. Uh, who, who loved Christmas movies? But it's not going to come to me. But it, it happened in a, in a in a previous episode. But uh, since we we are talking about Elf, I'm going to recommend this movie for you as well. Uh, it's another real Ferrer one uh, with uh, an extra sprinkle of uh, Ryan Reynolds and Octavia Spencer, who I adore. It's a musical. Ferrell sings in it beautifully. Uh, it's called Spirited, and it's on Apple TV. Uh, and I highly recommend it. It's a retelling twisted. in a twisted way of a Christmas Carol from Charles Dickens, okay. and uh, it's brilliant. Like, Excellent. I, oh, I'm definitely gonna because every Christmas, uh, my wife like uh, all the Christmas songs are playing constantly, and we, hey, yeah. uh, when we're rip- wrapping the, the presents and stuff, we put a Christmas movie on. So. That's going to be on there. Yes, please, please, because it's very, yeah. very good. I love that movie so much. Like I watched it like two times already. About three. The other thing, the other thing, why I liked, um, why I was so into Alien and stuff is because my dad used to get an old magazine called Starlog. Okay. Um, it's an old industry uh, thing he had to get from America, uh, mm-hmm. and it was fantastic with in-depth um, um, reviews and interviews nice. with uh, all the industry uh, people, as Spielberg, the, the the special effects guys, Industrial Light and Magic, and and great glossy posters that you could take out. And at the back, it had um, uh, masks and helmets from all the sci-fi films that you could order. And I so wanted because they were literally almost they looked in the photos like film grade yeah. masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, my dad was like, yeah can't afford that so no so, uh, i know, I know the exactly the, the type you mean um i've been getting empire magazine for about 10 yeah. years um at this point i've got there i've got like a whole shelf just full of empire nice. magazines and i get them every month and it's always a christmas present i get from my parents or I'm oh, like, the subscription. Like, yeah just get like another 12 months please because like, i it's do like, you I always keep... get the film quote not always. I will look at them no. every once in a while, and, and I I often forget um to. It's to, they can be hard sometimes. They're, they're, they're really cool. They're quite yeah. They and they're always to do with something going on in the thing, and sometimes they'll come in. They end up just getting like left in places because I'll I'll <laughs> flick through them when I get them. You usually do the crossword at the back, and then suddenly they like left it in the living room for three months, and I'm like, I need to put that with the rest of them, and I need to figure out what order they go in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and also the thing that gets me because uh, I'm a bit of a completionist sometimes, and um. It's annoying when they release like five yeah. covers for an empire. And I'm like, oh, means I've kind of got to get all five. <laughs> um, but, no, I had to stop doing that because it costs an absolute fortune. Yeah, this yeah. is true. It's, it's, what's nice about the the subscription is that they have the subscription covers, so they tend to do one like very cool piece of artwork on the subscription cover. So I don't have to. I I don't feel that it is much of a need to be like now. I have to get all four versions of this so that they can all sit yeah. together. And... Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's, just, it's it's much better. But I I love I love getting my Empire magazines every month because there's always something really interesting in it, and it means I keep up to date with what's going on. 
young, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It definitely helps. Uh, all right, Katie, do you have a question about uh, Yeah, I, I think what we I think uh we should just go straight on to like what are, what have you been watching at the moment? Because that's always my favorite thing. I really like knowing what's going right. people are. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I've written a list and you guys can <laughs> ask me about one or, or whatever, but I'll I'll go down the list because I okay. watch a lot of TV. I've I've yes. got a four month old child. Um, so, and it wasn't an easy pregnancy for my wife. So we mm. spent a lot of time in the house, um, watching. And so I'm going to go down here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, there's a bit of a mix. Okay. Fall of the house of Usher foundation, stranger things, obviously mm. hijack yes. severance, mm. wilderness, mm -hmm. the peripheral, mm. the wheel of time, rings of power, shadow and bone, Vikings, Mandalorian and or Obi-Wan, Boba Fett and, uh, and that's, and I want to see Last of Us, but we haven't got that subscription package. So, um, oh my gosh, so it. many excellent choices in there. I loved Severance. Um, Severance uh, was fantastic. Severance I get my wife. Was my wife fantastic. wasn't, mm, but it is brilliant. It's, I'm, I'm still. I'm like, I've no idea. I'm hoping that that will come back soon <laughs> because yeah. I'm like that ending <laughs> from from season one was stunning. Um, yeah, it was a slow burn as well. That mm -hmm. one. You really had to give it time to get into its own, get into its stride. Um, yeah. yeah. It was, uh, so we, we are planning on doing our own little review of Fall of the House of Usher very soon because we've both very watched good. it and we've done a lot of talk about Mike Flanagan and, and all of his, his works. Um, nice. so I love be, Flanagan. We, we, he's uh, he's just the best, honestly. Like, I, I, I wrote like a very detailed article just now about the fall of the House of Usher, uh, where I basically just went through the whole thing because Edgar Allan Poe is my other favorite uh, person in the entire world. And uh, Mike Flanagan understood Edgar Allan Poe and yeah. just put everything in there so beautifully. That's essential when you want to read Poe and uh, all the similarities and all the stories that he grabbed for this entire thing is just brilliantly done and everyone is so good but the greatest is mark hamill because mark hamill is the greatest oh. always whenever he does something i'm like yes and I, to, I kind of looked and i thought uh oh, that's mark is that mark hamill it is it is mark hamill isn't it, is. it? He's one of those guys he'd like doesn't actually look that different when when you see him in things and yet he just his physicality is so different in things oh. that you do kind of sit there going no, it is you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things. But like to your point earlier about like people feeling like they need to rush through things in order to like, you know, the that pacing sort of thing. I was thinking about how Mike Flanagan, I think, is kind of the exception to that rule. He really does know how to let things sort of sit in quiet spaces and let people I like that he lets people just talk. I know that there's some yeah. people really don't like the fact that Flan Mike Flanagan likes to write really long monologues for his characters, but I love oh, I like that. that. <laughs> No, I like that. The whole kind of the 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 dialogue between, um, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, I'm really bad with character names. So um, we are terrible the, the, with the, names the, here. But yeah, main, so it's, you're good. The main usher, the main yes. usher guy, sat in and in the house chatting with the the, the his legal um, counterpart. Um, where you know their their conversations and mm -hmm. and just what was going on with usher. Mm -hmm. around that you know and it was just so it was lovely it, it took its time and then all of a sudden bang you yeah. know and and, uh, and i like that i like the, the kind of really well thought out jump scare yeah um, yes see this hard is the thing, to do it's hard I, to do I, now. I i i hate like i usually hate jump scares usually because you can they, they're so obviously telegraphed yes and i don't like that feeling of like i know that you're going to do something coming. and I, just, I hate it i can't stand it i really am so bad at sitting in it but i think that mike flanagan is the only person that i've been like i respect that like the, yeah. the there's a there's a there's one jump scare in hail house which is like the jump scare that he does in the entirety of the show and it really got me and i was like no i i'll, I'll take that that was that was well Fair done enough. i appreciate that yeah exactly <laughs> if you can if you can if it's not contrived or too is this going to happen or is it? Um, then, I, you know, fair play to them. I, yeah, yeah, I think it's great. But another one that took its time and I, is building really nicely is, is the Rings of Power. I, 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 I thought that is really going, um, hopefully, to be really good. But it took its time to get there. But I'm, I'm invested in that because I'm a huge, uh, well, not huge, but I bloody love Lord of the Rings. So, um, yeah. I mean, I think I, think, I, th I saw... 
all three Lord of the Rings movies in the IMAX from seven at night to seven in the morning. Wow. Um, they showed them back to back with a gap between each one that you could go out and get coffee and snacks and stuff. And you, it's the mean, best. In my head, I'm like, I, I, I would be like, <laughs> go early in the morning and finish late at night. Why would you do that? Like in over the course of a night? As because a basically <laughs> um, it didn't interrupt their regular schedule. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So it, yeah. They just missed the evening show of one film um, and that's fine. But then the rest yeah. is. I think in my head, I, immediately I'm thinking I would fall asleep. Like not because the movies are, 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 it's just like you're in a dark room. It's really late at night. I would end up falling asleep. <laughs> I I worried that that would be the case, but actually the time went really quickly. Um, and and I wasn't the only time I was tired was on the train home. I was just like, oh yeah, God, my eyes are tired. Oh wow, okay, yeah. But yeah. it's um, the, the Lord of the Rings, so it's it's worth it. Yeah. It was, that yeah, has it was, it was awesome. That's been me for the past couple of days. Lily and I have both been playing the new Spider Man game, um, wow. which I've been just kind of been solidly going through. My eyes have been like, please, like, please, please stop looking at screens. Yeah. I'm like, I have to <laughs> continue playing Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. How do you blink? Oh yes. <laughs> it's these fine, games it's now are looking. These games are so rich, beautiful, and look so yeah. amazing. That you know, when I was playing uh, Horizon Forbidden West and all that, and Horizon oh, Zero Dawn, I just climb up to a top of a mountain and just kind of just watch the view. This, just, just looking the view around. and the change of the sun setting and the, the change of atmospherics, mm -hmm. and it was just sublime. It was mm -hmm. really wonderful to see. Um, and and then I got a. a PSVR2 headset. Ooh, nice. And um yeah, I I haven't had a VR headset before and I was like, I want this. Um, <laughs> and it was delayed for ages. So I felt I deserved it. Yes. And then I I play and I played Call of the Mountain bed. Nice. Um, came out and that was my holiday i was just like standing climbing up to a mountain and just looking at these waterfalls and stuff and thinking i'm actually got a little bit of vertigo <laughs> this is insane <laughs> this is really crazy um so i'm i'm really looking forward to getting something else but i have no idea what other game to play um I, I wouldn't know what to play either i, I think it would be horizon and that's it basically <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no horror in VR, that's a bad idea. It, it's, it's just. <laughs> I might, I might dip my toe in the in the horror, but it would have to be pretty good. So I yeah, that's the thing. That's I hear the, the Resident thing. Evil games do very well in the VR do setting. Right. Um, yeah, so something to think about. And <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? All right. Uh, before we uh, say our goodbyes, uh, mm. there's one last thing uh, that I wanted to definitely include in this, and that is your top four favorite movies that's such an evil question i know um so i'm gonna i i fudge this a little bit so i'm gonna go that's in fine. in we'll my top fudging. one in in yes in 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 certain genres mm -hmm. okay so so in animation it's mm. the incredibles um, perfect I, Did a choice <laughs> love the incredibles that I is another one in our house that constantly gets quoted love it it's constantly. such a rich full wonderful animation crammed with so much that I am um, when I saw it I was I I didn't want it to end and I I, I actually thought oh crikey oh no this has only been on for 45 minutes this has got a long a long way to go because it just was it was telling such a wonderful story that was so rich that had something for both kids and mm -hmm. adults that could cool. watch it simultaneously I just thought ah oh, this this is lovely so there's that one um gangster um because i love film noir um it's either going to be untouchables or goodfellas and i couldn't decide which um there's hmm. there's a whole history for for both of those as to yeah. why i got into watching them um so it's not just the films that's, themselves but yeah. that's a hard hard choice in there yeah i th i think it might have to be goodfellas just because yeah, probably. i've watched it so many times but the yeah. untouchables is a wonderful film it's so um good. just the look of it the the whole pram going down the stairs is just cinematic gold dust <laughs> true, true. Um, um so yes there's that one um i won't do fancy because we talked enough about that um a surprise one for me was the color purple um i saw that I and, color purple. Oh, such a good film and then um a guilty pleasure uh, yes a, so a guilty pleasure is weird science Okay. Um, which know, is just such a teen film. It's 
I, I watched it far too often when I was a kid. Um, but yeah, there's that one. And then two oldies were um, The Great Race, which not a lot yes. of people know nowadays, mm. which I just loved watching as a kid. It's a good one. Yep. And and The Court Jester which with Danny Kaye, Ooh. which is a musical. And that's really yes. cool. musical. It's a very so good there, one, though. So there we go. There's the, there's those movies, um, which is slightly more than four, but um, no, no okay. I love it. I, 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 okay. The more we get to hear about, the always better. I love I love hearing about yeah. the people, um, people's the, yeah, taste of what, what they will sit down and just sort of like like to take in on a on a. Uh, I've got know. such a bad memory as well because I'd love to be able to. I know that I've watched tons of movies and some have been fantastic, and yet if I sit down of an evening and think, right, I can watch any film I like. Mm-hmm. My mind goes, you'll never remember yep. them. Um, <laughs> See, this is why I'm so bad at watching movies because the moment I'm actually in the mood to watch a movie, um, I will forget every uh, movie yes. that I actually, like I have so many like absolutely classic movies yeah. that people always talk about that I just have not seen. Um, and every time, no, none of them will ever come to me when I'm when I, I'm in the mood to, to watch a film. My plan for tonight is to watch Spider-Man 2, which I have definitely seen before, but like I'm like, I'm going to watch Spider-Man 2 tonight. Because there are other films like, like, like Memento, The Third Man, Chinatown, Big Sleep, yes. Rear Window, LA yes. Confidential, all those yes. film noir ones, which I absolutely love. Mm. Um, yep. And I, because I, if if I could grow up in a genre, it would be film noir. Um, oh just, yeah, uh, yeah. That's Art a good Deco. Choice. Oh, it's just a, it's just a beautiful era. Brutal, mm. horrible as well, but just beautiful. Oh, um, true. Yeah. I oh, I love seen those. the Big Sleep, but I have read it because it was, I, I did it. Uh, it was one of those oh. things we did. Um, we did crime novels during my my A levels. So I, I I wrote a full a whole essay comparing. Um, I compared the Big Sleep to Gone Girl. Uh, which was a very know. fun essay for me. I really enjoyed yeah. putting that one together. It was a just because when about I weird. did my course, um, train spotting was on, out as a novel. It was out in the cinema and it was out in the theatre. So I compared okay. all three. Oh, nice. that's amazing! Um, which is just yeah. I mean, fantastic and very different actually. They're each mm. very different, but you can't beat the novels. The novels are just oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought the first novel. I haven't read it yet, but I I got a little <laughs> I got a little re obsessed with um with train spotting earlier this year because I I watched all of Elementary, which is the a, the American Sherlock Holmes series, yes. and was like just appreciating how much I love Johnny Lee Miller, which Johnny is why Lee I went Miller. to go see him in the West End. Um, and then I was like, I should go back and watch <laughs> train spotting because I haven't seen it in like ten years. Um, yeah. uh, and I watched that, and then I watched T two, and I. Just bloody love T two was so good. Like, yeah. <laughs> it really, really was. Um, so I need to. Yeah, I found I found a copy of Trainspotting in HMB of all places. Like <laughs> I got like two books for eight pounds, and I was like, sweet. I'm so happy with this. I will sit down and read it. But I'm, my I was just telling Lily my local cinema is going to be showing Trainspotting uh, in the next couple Fantastic. of weeks. So I'm like, I'm going to go t- see that in the I'm cinema really actually. Yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta you gotta uh all right uh before we tell people where to find you on the big internet uh i will make uh, another highlight uh because you mentioned that movie the color Pur- purple is coming out as a musical uh oh, right. wow. this year in december really? so yep uh i am very excited because i Fantastic. love the original so i'm like i've heard please <laughs> yeah, be I've... good I absolutely bawled in that film. Just, that it's, was a mess. An absolute yep, mess. Yep. Same. The acting in it is just Beautiful. superb. It is. Really good. Yeah. It is. Yeah, so, um, Cynthia Erivo um, originated the role on the on Broadway, I believe. And it, it, she, I think oh, she won a Tony for it. She, or she, she at least did, got yeah. nominated. <laughs> no, like, she did win it. She did win the Tony. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've heard amazing things about it. I'm quite excited to know that. that it, I, I knew it was me made into the film. I didn't know it was coming out this year, though. It's coming wow. out in December. So I'm very excited. And uh, Hayley Bailey is good. Hayley Bailey, it's so weird to say it. <laughs> oh, I'm always fun. She's amazing. And she's, she's going to be in it as well. So I'm wow. like very, very excited to see her in more things so highly recommend that in december and that's going to be a very good and very sad experience as well so <laughs> yes uh, exactly yeah. just for everyone who's listening or watching us be prepared like that like tissues are Take very a tissue. yeah, yeah it's a must yeah it's a must uh so where can people find you on the internet 
I'm I'm on X. I'm still going to say Twitter. Just call it Twitter. Um, it's Twitter. We're just calling it Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Uh, Scott Joseph underscore UK, I think it is. Um, and my website. I mean, you can find all my socials on my website, which is just scottjoseph.co.uk. Um, and yeah, if you want to browse my work, it's all on there. Yeah. And if you're an employer and you want to work with me, get in touch. <laughs> there you that's, a, that's a big mood. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> hey, if yeah. anybody wants to hire me, that would be great. That would be really good because I'm, you know, really I'm resting. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> if you need the dead person, I'm here. So <laughs> yeah, yes. a whole trio going on here. Yeah, there you go. go. Yeah. 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 Find us, please. Uh, <laughs> all right, Scott, thank you so much for coming thank on you so our thank you. podcast. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. It was so much fun. So much fun. Uh, and hope to pick up later on when you're doing another amazing thing. Uh, Definitely. Because you deserve it. You were fantastic in the game, uh, honestly. So can wait to see you in more things Indeed. thank you very much and all the best to you guys with, with all your ventures and i thank hope you, you get to play more than just dead people <laughs> thank you <laughs> i really hope so <laughs> one day my time will it, will it will happen it will <laughs> all right thank you so much and thank you guys don't forget to subscribe mm -hmm. and we're going to be back uh with another episode uh next week love you all goodbye bye, bye.